This is legendary musician Bob Dylan, and this is a limited release from his whiskey brand, Heaven's Door. Let's give this guy a taste, judge it on five different criteria, assign it a bruisal score, and see how it stacks up against the other whiskeys we've reviewed. This is Heaven's Door Decade Series 10-year-old straight bourbon whiskey. Now notice, I did not say Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And that's because Heaven's Door is located in Tennessee, although this is not their distillate. Heaven's Door is actually still building their distillery where they're gonna take all this modern architecture and attach it to a fairly traditional looking 160 year old church. We're not here to judge their architecture decisions, so I'll stick to the whiskey. What I like about Heaven's Door is that they're not out here pretending like Bob Dylan handcrafted this whiskey in his free time like a lot of other celebrity marketing. It's pretty transparent that he's a partner in this endeavor and he hooked up with industry veteran Mark Bashala, CEO of Spirit Investments, to launch this brand. Mark was part of the team that founded Angels Envy. He grew that brand, sold it to Bacardi in 2015, and then used those dollars to create Spirit Investments where he builds brands like Heaven's Door and Rare Hair. Now Mark, let me talk to you just a bit. Come, come here, let me, let, me, let me holler at you just a bit. I really wouldn't mind trying a little of that Rare Hair. It's a little out of a bourbon budget, but... I might be able to get some views on a bottle of that. Now, I know I probably butchered your last name, but we can get past that. Just holler at me. Anyway, Mark knows how to grow a whiskey brand, so I'm expecting this to be good stuff. My name is TJ Gamble and this is Bruzel. Let's get started by looking at the bottle. The front is pretty simple. All the things I just said. Heaven's Door, age 10 years, decade series, straight bourbon whiskey. It checks in at 100 proof. On the side, I wanted to create a collection of American whiskeys that, in their own way, tell a story. Bob Dylan. With over 20% rye in the mash bill and non-charcoal mellowed, this bourbon is unlike anything you've ever had from Tennessee before. Bottled by Heaven's Door Spirits in Nashville, Tennessee, distilled in Tennessee. They don't give us a lot of information about what this whiskey is comprised of or where it comes from, other than it comes from Tennessee and it has more than 20% rye on the mash bill. What it did tell us that's interesting though, is that although this came from Tennessee, it's not a Tennessee whiskey. A lot of Heaven's Door's releases are Tennessee whiskeys, which means it goes through a process called the Lincoln County process. And that's where they take the bourbon and they filter it. People get mad if you call it a bourbon, where they take the whiskey and they filter it through sugar maple charcoal, and then it comes out Tennessee whiskey, which is miraculously different and not even close in any way, shape, form, or fashion to actual bourbon. This one didn't go through that. Straight bourbon whiskey, and they note that it does not go through a charcoal filtration. The 100 proof on this guy is that perfect drinking range that I'm looking for, and the MSRP on it is right around $90. And as I said, we're gonna judge this on five different criteria. But before we get into that, it really helps me out if you'll hit the like button on the video. Maybe consider giving me a subscribe. I mean, you've made it this far. We're trying to take this channel up to the next level and all of your support on Patreon and channel memberships here on YouTube really help us do that. And we've also got a free Discord server for folks that are pretty cool to hang out with and wanna talk about bourbon. Links to all of that are in the description. Enough talking. Let's get to drinking. We've got our new limited Bruzel Glen Cairns here, which you can get at Bruzel.com if you happen to want one. And the first criteria is aroma. Now there are no distiller's notes on this bottle. They give us absolutely no information whatsoever. So we just got to figure it out on our own. This has a very pleasant nose on it. I get a little nutmeg, a nice sweet oakiness, a little bit of rye spice honestly i would expect more rye based on the amount of rye they said was in the mash bill but overall that's a pretty solid nose i'm gonna give it a seven and the next criteria is flavor what does this sucker taste like i don't know let's find out not as much nutmeg on the flavor to me the oakiness is a little bit more bitter. It definitely leaves a little bit of dryness through the mid palate, and it has a nice rye spiciness on the finish. Overall, a pretty good whiskey, although I don't think the taste is quite as good as the aroma. That oakiness getting just a little more bitter than I get on the nose and leaving that dryness through the mid palate is gonna take it down a notch for me, so I'm gonna give it a six. And the next criteria is complexity. And again, this is one of those things that really skews toward higher proof whiskeys. This being 100 proof, it ought to be able to hold up pretty well. Now what we're looking for here is how does the whiskey evolve as you're consuming it? What flavors does it hit you with up front? As it's in your mouth, does it evolve into something else? And then as you consume it, does it evolve and change again? 
This whiskey definitely evolves on the palate, as you would expect a 10 year old 100 proof whiskey to do. However, it's not the most overwhelming evolution. You get a little bit of a subtle change throughout the whiskey, but nothing that just blows me away. So I'm gonna give it a six. And the next criteria is mouthfeel. And what we're looking for here is the thickness, the viscosity of the whiskey. How does it coat the palate and really get flavors to all the various taste receptors? And again, this is something that skews more toward higher proof whiskey. I'm not gonna hold back that we're just biased against higher proof stuff. But again, that 100 proof is where you really start to be able to hold up to a lot of these other whiskeys that we're trying. This one sticks to the glass pretty well. Like you can see it, I don't know if you can see it draining down the side of the glass there a little bit. It coats the palate well, delivers flavors to all of those taste receptors. It's not the thickest whiskey that we've tried, but Overall, pretty good, and I give it another six. And the next criteria is finish. What does this whiskey leave you with once you've consumed it? The finish lingers for a little while, but it's not overly long, like it's completely dissipated. Not a lot of burn for 100 proof, you get just a little bit of warming, but again, this is slightly above average at a six. And that gives Heaven's Door Decade Series 10 year old straight bourbon whiskey, a bruisal score of 31. And that puts it right below Larceny Barrel Strength B522, which is a great place to be. Like this bourbon holds up extremely well. And we haven't given all of the celebrity whiskeys we've tried on this channel bruisal scores. That's kind of a new thing, but this has to be the best celebrity backed whiskey we've tried on this channel thus far. But y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments.